Today, we're looking at um, common practices in the collaborative. I'd like you all to get as involved as you can. I hope you've seen over the last um, month, things have really taken off in terms of our visibility and engagement for this project. We're using lots of different methods now to get you involved without having to always come in person. So we've got uh, a growing uh, Twitter presence at Yorkshire Imaging. Um, all of the events are now uh, booked through Eventbrite, which means it's self-service. You can check yourself in there like you've all done um, today. Um, if you're ever in doubt, YorkshireImaging.org is the project landing page, and everything else is linked from there. So that's pretty much the only one that you really need to remember is YorkshireImaging.org. And as I mentioned, the forum, which um, is a good place to go and continue the discussion. A quick reminder of what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to connect 24 hospitals throughout eight trusts, covering 2.3 million people. This is the geographic distribution of the collaborative, stretching from Airedale on one side over to the coast and down into North Lincolnshire. Uh, I do, it's right on the very bottom corner and I can see it on my screen. I'm afraid the, uh, the, the uh, projector chops it off. Yeah. So thinking about what these areas have got in common and how they differ. Well, we've got 24 hospitals widely distributed, as we've seen, and they've all got different geography. They are organised into eight different trusts covering different patient demographics. You know, on one side of the county we've got farming communities, on uh, and another aspect we've got coastal communities and um, city dwellers, temporary and permanent. Um, those 2.3 million people, they've all got different characteristics and different health needs. But actually there are a lot of common NHS practices which we're using to serve their needs already, but we're doing it independently of each other, largely. The hospitals themselves are also individuals. All those different departments within them, different executives with uh, very different goals, and of course the individuals, us, that work in them. Embracing diversity has been shown to produce better outcomes in terms of profitability in private business. We don't work on profitability, but actually we kind of do, don't we? We work on value for money in the healthcare we deliver. So this, this slide from, um, with data from McKinsey has shown that an ethnically diverse workforce is 33% more profitable and a gender diverse workforce is 21% is more profitable. So by embracing our differences um, as we work together, we should actually deliver better care. And to remind you all of our common goal, it's that every patient in Yorkshire should be able to attend an appointment with full availability of their medical images and the associated reports at the point of care wherever they go within the collaborative. The bigger picture of this is that we're trying to come into line with the United Kingdom goal set out in the Royal College of Radiologists' Who Shares Wins document, where they highlight that forming regional collaborative networks um, will help towards the ultimate goal of a UK-wide connected radiology network. We've seen successes from this approach already in the form of the MRAD Vanguard, several other networks such as that in Cheshire and Mersey, and, and loads of others that have formed recently. Um, and there is another bigger reason to this. Uh, on, a, on a personal level as a radiologist, we are a workforce in crisis and we need to redesign ourselves. In Yorkshire, the um, retirement rate for the next five years stands at 29%. And we have insufficient trainees um, available locally to replenish everybody one for one and certainly when we look at the skill set we have insufficient trainees um, and we already have vacant posts without without considering retirements we have between nine and twenty five percent vacancies 
What we've been given here in Yorkshire is quite unique. Instead of the usual top-down approach, which we've become accustomed to, we've been asked to design radiology uh, in this county for the next 10 years and beyond. So thank you all for coming. Today's the first workshop where we're going to explore our common practices. I don't want to go too much into this because this is over to you to come up with ideas. But it's very difficult when you're given a completely blank canvas. So I've had a bit of a think about it and I've got a couple of, um, a couple of suggestions here. If we think towards common scanning protocols, that's a good contentious one to start with. There are some services which naturally lend themselves to this. We think about cancer networks who have common centralized MDTs. Or we think about trauma networks where the flow of patients is to a major trauma center. Would those processes not work better if a minimum data set was always adhered to? If the trauma center always knew that an inbound patient was going to have a scan which followed a basic set of images you know, say it has three sequences in it that they expect to see, and the problem of interpreting the scan just disappears because they're familiar with what they're getting. Remember that when it's networked, they can start looking at these things well before the patient arrives and be really well prepared for what's coming. It's all made easier if you're looking at a standardized data set. To some extent, it's already been done for us. Lots of people already follow the military-recommended trauma scanning protocol, and that's an example of, of a networked approach already in action. Rather than a megalomaniac approach to this, of saying you will scan this in a certain way, I would think of a minimum data set approach. To say, if you're going to show this at, uh, at this MDT, please include at least these three sequences in your, in your scan. Beyond that, add whatever you like locally but we, we'd like to see these three for our meeting. <coughs> and we'd share these uh, protocols online for easy access. This would be useful if you bought a new scanner, for example. Bought a new scanner, I've got no idea how to put the best protocols in there. Where can I find them out? Well, what do we do at the moment? We usually ask somebody who's already got one, or we ask the vendor. We could share these protocols within our collaborative. So I'd advocate a light touch approach form panels of experts with open invitation to physical meetings or webinars because we struggle to get to meetings. And I'd like you all to think about which areas might be suited to common scanning protocols. Thinking about safety practices. These are often things that we don't find thrilling in our daily jobs. Writing a contrast protocol, how to deal with a contrast reaction, how to deal with extravasation. It's possible that we could write white-labeled documents, which we all agree on, again, written by a panel of experts. And you simply drop on your trust's identity, you read it and check that it could be locally accepted or modified for local use. It would give us a head start. We also need to think about working at scale together. We all need to agree what urgent means. I've written my ideas of how we could time um, scan priority there, but I, I'd like you to think about the same things. And Regionalised dose management is another thing which could be taken off each trust's hands. We already often share the physics teams. To some extent they're doing that for us already. We could actually publish the DRLs for the region and you could find out. If you're a slight outlier, you might realise, I think we need a, a visit from physics to come and help us. Or when you're buying a new scanner, you could say, well, which one gives the best compromise of uh, image quality and, and dose? On a similar note, think about patient documents. At the moment, there's very little consistency in patient documents between hospitals. What does your advice sheet look like when you come for an image-guided uh, joint injection? And we do have patients who go to different hospitals, so they get conflicting advice. They're not sure what's correct. It might mean that they, they follow the wrong aftercare for procedures that require it. It's probably an area that, at some level, we can agree on, but there will always be bespoke procedures and, and doctor's methods to consider as well. 
But consistency at scale is very appealing to hospitals because it is more legally robust. Again, we could have white-labeled documents which you can accept should you choose to. They would have been reviewed by a panel of lawyers which we appoint collaboratively, read by the usability and readability panel, translated into the most common regional languages, and meets a minimum mandatory uh, data set with the possibility for local adaptations above that. This sort of idea should help administrative processes as well. It would deburden service managers. It could mean easier CQC inspections because you know that you've got a robust document in place that has already met the standard for two or three trusts and it will for yours as well with your local adaptations. If it should appeal to you, we could also make sure that these documents prepared you for accreditation such as ISAS. In the short and long term, we'll need to train staff. So in the short term, I think we're all very aware we've got a totally new PAX product here and training is going to be a burden. But in the long term, we'll need to keep training staff. You think about ongoing training to become experts in the product and beyond that, CPD training. Training needs to be less time precious than it is at the moment. How many times do you hear it that I didn't get any training? I was on holiday, I was sick that day, I missed my opportunity. Or it was so rushed and then they never came back again. Or the ever popular, well I asked the super users but they don't know anything. These are all real phrases that I've heard. We should accept that there is a just-in-time mentality to everything nowadays. You don't tend to proactively go and do your PAX training. You tend to do it when it's either required of you or you need it to carry out your job, and we should actually embrace that. We should provide online on-demand training for the new product, as well as in-person days, and a help forum approach. We already have a forum in place ready for that. It's somewhere that you can start using for help when you get the new product. And most of all, a coordinated script for consistent training and deployment across all the sites, so that everybody's getting the same level of training. That's all that I want to actually say about this, just to put a few ideas out there. But really, I'm looking forward to hearing what you all come up with this afternoon.